we're going to show you the top five bass fishing lures you need to catch 20 times more bass than you're catching today. Today we're going to cover jerk baits, crank baits, chatter baits, jigs, and of course soft plastics. Hope you enjoy this. We're going to start off with jerk baits. All of you know that jerk baits are money. They are one of the most versatile lures in your tackle box and an absolutely perfect lure to use year round too. A jerk bait is a must have for any and every angler. And what makes it really shine is its erratic, darting, random action when you snap it and jerk it during the pause and retrieve process. So when you're fishing jerk baits, the general rule of thumb is that in clear water, you want to use a natural or transparent color lure. And in stained or murky water, solid colors and ones with a bit of silver in them typically work best. Remember that a bass's favorite color and the one they see best and most easily is red. So if you have some combination of silver and red in your lure, more times than not, it will catch a fish. Also, remember that muddy water is not the ideal situation to use a jerkbait for bass because the real strength of this lure is to draw bass in from longer distances before they strike it. The darker and the muddier the water, the harder it will be for them to see a jerkbait. It's usually best to use about a three to four inch length lure, which you've been seeing here in the pictures, because these dive to a maximum of about 20 feet, depending on what you use. And if you remember anything from this section about jerk baits, remember that the cadence and rhythm of the retrieve is what will catch you the most bass. You gotta be able to twitch the lure and pause it. The more erratic the movement, the likely the strike. Jerk it, let it sit, pause it, hold on tight, because usually it's after the pause that the bass inhales it. And there are more than just bass while I hit them too. Okay, everybody's favorite now, soft plastics. Obviously, the biggest and most comprehensive category of bass lures by far are soft plastics with literally countless of options like Senkos, tubes, power worms, craws, creatures, super flukes, and many, many more. Soft plastics can be fished tons of different ways, as you know, with the most common killer colors being watermelon and green pumpkin. Those will work in virtually every lake and river in this country. Remember, too, that the bigger the bait you use, the bigger the fish you can typically catch. But if the colors and shapes and sizes you fish are simply not catching bass, you know you have to be flexible, change presentations, change the style until you get a finicky bass to bite. You can also fish soft plastics weedless, which is what we like to do, because because that allows you to get into the thickest of cover. And that's where the biggest lunker bass are typically hiding, waiting to ambush unsuspecting prey. You can rig soft plastics wacky style for Senkos and give them more of a wacky bouncing action and you can use bullet weights on a worm hook or even nail weights that get inserted into the body of the bait to make them look even more hidden and concealed. The point is, any bait or fishing store you go into, whether it's a Dick's Sporting Goods, a Bass Pro Shops, Cabela's, or even a Walmart, you'll find aisles and aisles of soft plastics to choose from. So, you've got to be flexible. You've got to match the bait or forage colors in the lake you're fishing because it is a pretty color or a texture to the human eye doesn't mean it'll work for bass. Also, do your research, talk to your local bait shop, talk to fishermen at the lake you're going to be fishing. Most people are really open to telling you what they caught their biggest bass on. So just ask around. Don't be bashful. You'll get a lot of great tips that way. Okay, now we're going to start talking about my favorite, the chatterbait. This is probably one of my favorite lures of all time. It's a jig, essentially, with a skirt on it and a blade at the top front. It's the blade that creates the magic because of its rapid-fire vibration that really turns bass on. You can even add a soft plastic trailer to the end of it, and that way you'll catch even more bass. And you are going to want to make sure you've got a stiffer rod and stronger braided line like we're showing here 
preferably because when you fish the chatterbait, you got to be able to reel it through the grass and the heavy cover. You can certainly work it in open water too. The best way to fish a chatterbait is to cast it out towards any structure or cover you can find, let it sink for just a bit, and then do a nice steady retrieve. The bait will do all the hard work as the blade vibrates through the water and the trailer gives you the extra little action you need uh, to trigger the lazy bass strike. So the combination of action and sound is what's key for this bait. And it allows you to fish down about 10 to 12 foot of water too. So we really love the chatterbait because if you pick the right color and size, you can fish this thing year round throughout the entire United States, whether it's in clear or dirty water, and of course, everything in between. Give it a shot. We think you'll really like it. It's really another great bait for your bass arsenal. Okay, now we're going to talk about the lipless crankbait, also known as rattlebaits. They're a terrific lure for both buoyancy and their sinking action. And remember, the best time to fish a lipless crankbait is typically in the spring and the fall when bass are more concentrated in shallow, cooler water. What makes this lure extra special is its tight wiggle and wobble, which you just saw. That is perfect for enticing sluggish bass in colder water. Now, one of the biggest advantages of a lipless crankbait is that they can be ripped through edges of grass pretty easily. And if the bass are hiding in the grass, this bait is forcing them into pretty aggressive reactionary strikes. Remember though, when you target bass in shallow water, you gotta make longer and more accurate casts so you don't spook them in the shallow pools. And not only are they perfect for largemouth bass, you can also catch pike, walleye, perch, trout, and even an occasional crappie if you fish it right and you select the right size and color. They are a lot of fun. It is a versatile lure, and you'll really have fun using it. Okay, jigs for bass. One of the best and most versatile lures you can use, and probably what I have caught more bass on over the decades than anything else. There are virtually hundreds and thousands of colors, types, sizes, shapes, and combinations to choose from, as you probably already know. But today we're going to cover the basics of jig fishing that will apply whether you fish a swim jig, a football head jig, finesse jig, or flipping jig. Jigging for bass is absolutely phenomenal when you have a lunker holding near cover like rocks, laydowns, or around pilings and docks. Of course, they are almost just as productive trolling the jig or fishing it in deeper or open water. And this is especially true in summer and winter months when the bait fish have moved out of the shallows and offshore into deeper water. Plain and simple, the jig is going to let you cover a lot more ground as bass are always on the move. So the general rule of thumb is to typically select more natural color tones, with a brown colored jig or a green pumpkin jig, like you see here, easily catching bass pretty much anywhere throughout the entire country. And what makes the jig so effective for catching even more bass is when you attach a soft plastic trailer, even tipping it with live bait, as the extra little action that the trailer provides is typically all it's going to take to trigger the bass strike, especially when they're more lethargic. So when you cast your jig out and retrieve it, reel it in a bit slower so that it has time to jig near the bottom and pass through the water column. Remember that bass feed upwards, so you usually get the strike on the way up, and that's when it's most fun. Okay, folks, thanks for watching. Please like this video, hit the subscribe button before you leave, and don't forget to enable your bell notifications so you never miss another great video coming your way.